Und mit diesen stimmungsvollen Bildern von mir ein herzliches Willkommen zu unserem Pressegespräch zur FSB 2023 unter dem Titel Nachhaltigkeit im Fokus der Sport- und Freizeitbranche, Status quo und Ausblick. Herzlich willkommen, schön, dass Sie alle dabei sind. Mein Name ist Alexander Königsmann und ich darf Sie in den nächsten ja, 60 bis 90 Minuten äh, willkommen heißen und Sie durch dieses digitale Pressegespräch führen. Und es hat sich in den letzten zwei Jahren, seitdem wir das letzte Mal hier zusammenstanden, vieles geändert und, und äh, unter anderem natürlich, dass wir ganz entspannt hier im Studio zusammenstehen können. Eine Sache ist allerdings gleich geblieben. An der FSB als der Fachmesse für Freitag und Sportbewegungseinrichtungen führt in der Sport- und Freizeitbranche kein Weg vorbei. Es ist der wichtigste Branchentermin für alle, die in dem Bereich hier Sport und Bewegungseinrichtungen führen. Und es ist der wichtigste Branchentermin für alle, die in dem Bereich hier Sport und Bewegungseinrichtungen führen. Und es ist der wichtigste Branchentermin für alle, die in dem Bereich hier Sport und Bewegungseinrichtungen führen. Will give you an insight on visionary planning and uh, all new developments. And in four months, from the 24th to 27th of October, the FSB is going to open its doors here in Cologne. And this is why today, not only would like to present latest news and uh, the state of the art of this industry, but we will focus on one topic that I just mentioned and it was announced uh, up front to this briefing and that is sustainability because also in the sports and leisure industry uh, sustainability is the buzzword we have to face enormous economic ecological and social social challenges and the question is how we can ensure today that urban open spaces and sports facilities are designed planned and implemented sustainably and in order to discuss about that we will present uh, a bundle of interesting information on FSB. We will discuss about the current trends in the sports and leisure industry and we will have a, a very practical approach. We will have many guests in the studio. Some uh, we videos have uh, were recorded up front and I'm very happy to welcome two people uh, here in the studio today. First of all, uh, the uh, managing director of the uh, Köln Messe, uh, Matthias Pollmann and the Secretary General um, of the International Association of Sports and Leisure Facilities, the IAKS, Klaus Meinl. Hello. So, uh, of course, we will uh, discuss about the details of uh, the FSB and with Klaus Meinl we will talk about the IAKS and related uh, subjects. But first of all, we will have a look at an example, an example uh, from practical life. Um, focusing on sustainability. And this is why, first of all, we would like to go to Hamburg, where we expect Christian Faber from the IBA Hamburg, and we will discuss uh, with him about an urban planning project in Oberbill Werber. Um, welcome, Mr. Faber. Nice to have you here. Thank you for having me. Moin, moin, as people in Hamburg say. Ich habe gerade schon gesagt, ähm, Stadt well, I just said that uh, urban planning, uh, the project Oberbill Werber, ja, is something extremely important. A new uh, urban district is being developed from scratch. And uh, what are the targets once you try to develop such a new district? Well, the Quarter Oberbill Werder is a major developing project in Hamburg. We will provide a habitat for 15,000 people and uh, we will have a lot of offers with regard to education, new jobs and as it is such an important project uh, for Hamburg, the IBA, the International Building Association uh, Hamburg, uh, was asked to organize this project and uh, it is the DNA of the IBA that in fact we want to create a community of uh, happy people that sounds uh, very ambitious but this is what we want to do we want to provide uh, the possibilities to live a happy life to uh, work and to live in um, compatibility with uh, 
nature and the social environment. And that is the DNA of the IBA that uh, is equivalent to innovation. The Senate as well asked us to be involved. For example, we were asked to um, develop a new plan in the field of mobility, uh, traffic uh, in, the in the field of energy supply, and so on and so forth. Um, I can show you some, some uh, examples uh, for an active city. One focus of IBA is that we want to allow for um, building communities. That means people uh, who want to build a, a house together. And that is something very sustainable, because then you have also a sustainable community, which is going to be the soul of this new district. So we have uh, the building-related hardware, which had to be established, but also uh, the soft aspects. You need some kind of traffic management, for example, and uh, the uh, inhabitants um, also need a social framework that they can uh, carry out uh, activities together. Then there is the energy side, that you need um, uh, buildings which are reduced uh, CO2 emission level, and uh, that uh, we have uh, uh, renewable energy in place. Well, um, a community of happy people, that sounds nice. First of all, you need housing facilities, then mobility is very important. You mentioned the buzzword active city. So what, in fact, is uh, during the conceptual phase while developing this quarter, what is the role played by sports and uh, physical activities in general? Well, in Oberbillwerder, we have different um, fields of work. And together with our partners for sports and physical activities, um, we try to develop a plan. First of all, we want to work in the field of hardware, because in such a district, you have a lot of uh, public space, uh, for example, parks or uh, streets. And what we would like to do there is building an infrastructure where people uh, have uh, many different possibilities to carry out physical activity uh, next to sports clubs, sports associations, and so on and so forth. We want to have more informal possibilities for making people move. You can do that uh, within the building framework, that it is easy for people to be active, so that sport activities are accessible. And uh, for example, we also want to see to it that uh, within the, uh, uh, the flats or the houses, uh, you can carry out sport. Could you give us two or three examples for that? Well, we are at a very early stage of our planning process. We are just preparing the um, uh, available spaces. We will organize a competition for an open space, Oberbillwerder. Uh, perhaps I can share my screen with you, and you can see that later on. I'm not very quick in doing that, sorry. If it doesn't work, it's not a problem. Then we can just discuss about this, this project. Can you see it here? Well, now we can see that. That's fine. For example, this is a sketch concerning this future project over Bill. Werder. We have the different zones in different colors. In green, you have the parks, the park belt. Then you have here formal sport areas, and uh, you also have informal ones everywhere in the district. And then the buildings 
where we could imagine that uh, people can be motivated to be physically active. Of course, we have the schools which are relevant and we have these different places, open space within the district where we can build new activities, uh, build new um, areas for sport activities. Is this a specific concept for Oberbill Werder or do you think that this could be a blueprint for other cities, for other municipalities, so that Oberbill Werder becomes a pilot project? Well, that is in fact our ambition. As long as uh, innovation um, has not uh, really been implemented, we should not talk about it being a blueprint for others. But it is a first step and I think our partners, um, all the uh, competent authorities are actually working with this target to make it a lighthouse project and a blueprint for other cities. And it is an innovative project. It is a first step and other municipalities uh, can just uh, uh, take the good examples, best practice, and others uh, might think that it is not fit for them. Well, thank you very much for having been with us and for having presented this project in Oberbill Werder. Greetings to Hamburg and lots of success. Thank you. Okay, now we got an impression about how urban spaces have to develop, not only for housing, but also uh, spaces uh, where you live and where you work at the same time. And before uh, going on, as this is a press briefing, I would like to mention something that I forget at the beginning. You have the possibility to ask questions with regard to Oberbill Weber or other aspects. So, uh, on the live stream, you scroll down and you find uh, an area where you can enter your name and your email address and you can send us your question and we will ask, answer it at the end of this broadcast. So we just heard uh, how the future could look like perhaps not only in Oberbill Werder, but also in other municipalities and cities. And of course, uh, an outlook is not possible without stock taking what is happening today. What is the current situation in our industry? What are the problems to overcome? And the IAKS, as one of the major sponsors of FSB, is a global player which is present everywhere, all around the globe, and is networked quite a lot. In fact, we would have liked to welcome Mr. Kannewischer, who is uh, the president of the IAKS, uh, and uh, unfortunately he cannot be with us, but he sent us a, um, a video and answered some uh, questions. Well, sports and leisure facilities have gone through a couple of difficult years. During the COVID pandemic, uh, facilities had to shut down down. Now we are happy that they are open again. We have a, a higher attendance in some places, a lower one in others, and that is due to a change of the sport behavior. There is a trend towards individual sports on public ground or even at home. And then, directly afterwards, and uh, during the COVID pandemic, we had problems with the supply chains. This has been enhanced during the Ukraine war. The building prices have gone up, and the delay for building projects is enormous as a result of it. And this is uh, still the case. And then, just afterwards, we had the energy crisis. That, in fact, uh, turned out not to be as dramatic as we thought in the beginning. Of course, the energy prices uh, 
uh, went up, but it was not life-threatening for our industry. But there is still high pressure on it, and it is very appropriate now to address the energy transition and to put it push it forward. All these crises have shown how important it is that our facilities are resilient and an end-to-end -end sustainability is important in this respect, in the social, in the economic and in the ecological uh, area. And the social sustainability is what we are focusing on very much right now. And a project like Oberbill Werder in Hamburg are very important in this respect. How can we take into account the needs of all our uh, inhabitants? How can we make people move? This is not necessarily equivalent to sports. We need a high-level participation process so that we can include uh, those who normally are not physically active and are not hurt so that they can be involved in the development of new sports and leisure infrastructure. And of course, um, this is also related to inclusive design, uh, which is the new buzzword for us uh, for the time being. How can we make people move? How can we shape a city so that people are motivated to uh, be physically active in a city. And another topic, I mentioned it already, is the energy transition. That is a very important aspect, and we have to discuss that here uh, during the FSB. It is about the reduction of CO2 emissions during the operation phase, and unfortunately in many areas it is not conceivable right now to have a zero emission uh, situation, and this is why we talk about CO2 emissions reduction and that means that we uh, require many more innov in innovative ideas and IAKS and FSB are the place to uh, discuss about that. Um, CO2 reduced building is also very important. How can I reduce the CO2 consumption during the building phase for example by using innovative new building material and last but not least how can we finance all these um, new tasks that we have. First of all, our infrastructure has to be operated in a profitable way and we need enough money in order to be able to overcome these uh, future challenges. So we have to uh, face them and I'm very, very happy to meet experts from all around the globe during the FSB for discussing about this. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Kanevisha, for giving us this insight. Thank you for your contribution. Now, uh, let us start our discussion here in the studio. We have heard very exciting contributions. Uh, we heard about active cities, Oberbelverde, quite an exciting project. We've received some insights into the sustainability program of the IAKS. What about the FSB um, in this respect? Do you have a position here? Yes, of course. Um, uh, trade straight fares which are internationally relevant are not just straight fares of the industry where industry shapes uh, their own stand. However, we need to identify ourselves together with our partners uh, with whom we conduct the fair with the aim to implement such topics and that is uh, to provide a value added to the visitor. Sustainability, of course, it's, um, it's discussed everywhere, also in Europe and also in Cologne, of course, we address two areas, product development, we heard something about this in the two statements, then uh, reusability of products, which materials are used, uh, and, and the second aspect is, of course, energy. Mr. Kanewisch already said, uh, first of all, the construction of the individual sports facilities is important, but how can energies be recuperated uh, like via P? TVs are generated um, and, uh, and Oba Belverde has shown, yes, the idea comes from politics, from the different institutions, but then, then uh, the pressure comes from the population uh, because the city can be made more attractive, we can offer more spaces, and these are the projects which we would like to present at the FSB, 
so that also municipalities have a room to show their ideas that is uh, that is apart from uh, the stands and the hall but also the congress programs and the co uh, we are going to talk about the cro congress and the congress programs in in the minutes but uh, what the press and media uh, uh, experts would like to hear about is uh, the state of bookings uh, is it fully booked what is the status of quo what is going to be full uh, it's a community of happy people just to take up uh, of, uh, of uh, what mr farber said and this is something which will be reflected in the halls after the past three years we're really grateful to be able to welcome visitors in our um, uh, in our halls and to have the world to be guests in cologne and uh, um, and we're so enthusiastic that we can open the doors of, of the fairs uh, just to to be more specific we are really uh, optimistic for the FSB we're expecting 450 exhibitors from around 40 countries same level as before corona uh, all market relevant companies have already booked at the halls and nearly uh, fully booked of course we uh, accept all other registrations which which may come in uh, there are further halls available so if you think you need to be uh, represented at the FSB uh, go ahead and contact us and, and after 21 the, uh, we see in, in 23 the way and the path towards physical events thank be to God um, but uh, but uh, the forecast is still very difficult how many how many visitors uh, will be attending but we do expect about uh, 25,000 uh, people then in parallel to the FSB the Equinel takes place uh, and really it's FSB Equinel as a duo uh, provides uh, synergies on the visitor size people stay longer in Cologne Aquanella um, great is incorporated into the framework program uh, provides value added and this is unique globally that two such events uh, take place at the same time on the uh, trade fair uh, the tra um, a trade fair uh, area and one of the most important partners uh, partners is the IAKS Klaus Meinl is here as ideal sponsor of uh, the event but a very important partner for the concept a uh, design IAKS and uh, and other partners um, other partners help us uh, to organize uh, the FSB in a way that it really makes sense to visit the fair and uh, that the trade fair visit is worthwhile well of course uh, of course one of the major pillars of the FSB is IAKS um, with uh, the central sea sports and leisure buildings as a foundation of a resilient uh, society then one of the highlights is the IAKS awards it's one of the highlights in the evening um, very pleased to be invited and to sit there and look at it then the second German sports facilities day together with uh, the, uh, the DOSB Germany and together with the German Association of Cities and Towns and this will take place on the 25th of October then there will be a conference of the German Ice Hockey Federation on the sustainable uh, sustainable refurbishment of ice um, uh, centers um, and uh, the planners forum of Stadt und Raum with the topic of sports trends and movement cultures and together with um, the day of landscape architects in North Rhine-Westphalia also in an important target group for our visitors which we might win over and we're also very in particular pleased with a great response in the playground equipment um, all, nearly all members of the BSFH will be represented the great cooperation with the BSFH um, that is uh, that is on the one hand exhibitors but also from the contents point of view uh, to work together with his partners in, in the framework of the planners forum topics um, uh, topics are addressed um, like playground safety and urban spaces around clay uh, and uh, there is uh, there is um, is another partner that is playground at 
uh, and a landscape that is also yeah. new <laughs> partners. <laughs> and this is the first impression um, of the FSB. Well, a lot of things going on, as we've heard, and now uh, and now uh, now we're we're looking forward to Mr. Meinl because we now we know that what he's looking forward to, and he he will uh, he will be looking forward to the IAKS uh, Congress. And uh, Mr. Mein already mentioned is one of the most important. Um, uh, elements of the SSB, perhaps you can talk a little bit about uh, what the target is and uh, what the goal is. Yes, as many, um, uh, many of you know, the Congress is being held for the 28th time as, uh, as uh, the today, this year's motto is Sports and Leisure Buildings as a Foundation of a Resilient Society. And the personal sponsors are ISC President Dr. Thomas Banz, IPC President Andrew Parson, and German Federal Minister of the Interior, Henancy Faeser. Um, um, this reflects our reputation and the goal of the Congress is to become the most important international forum for sports facility construction experts from all over the world who want to exchange ideas on the planning, construction, financing and management of sports and leisure facilities. On the topics, of course, what kind of initiatives are in place globally in order to uh, meet the challenges and uh, global challenges towards a resilient society? The focus will be on climate and environmental challenges, such as in the Congress sessions, today's design decisions and future-oriented programming, and also reducing the carbon footprint. Other important trends and themes include well-being, active living, community-oriented design and inclusion. We've already addressed this. In this context, the, uh, the revitalization of public and open spaces are playing an increasingly important role. But of course, uh, of course, uh, for example, pl plastics and microplastics play an important role, and um, that is synthetic um, turfs, uh, for example. Then we take a look at the Australian market, um, market where we take a look at the 2032 Olympic and Paralympic Games, where exciting programs to support physical activity and sports investments are emerging. Last but not least, we also expect exciting momentum to be generated by the presentation of the year's IOC, IPC, IAKS Architecture Awards. They honored sports and leisure facilities with meaningful sustainability and innovation, clear functionality, exceptional architecture, and optimal accessibility. The awards gala will take place on the 24th of October and will celebrate our industry's most innovative ideas. Well, it, it, without anticipating too much, but if we look at innovative ideas, that is from the point of view of the AKS, what um, is an optimal recreational exercise space in your um, view? Well, the best open spaces and exercise spaces are those that mobilize broad user groups for physical activity and social interaction. Well, such spaces must be a kind of feel-good space for families families and for health-oriented lifestyles. They should equally offer low threshold or low impact entry points, must be refuges for the people, and also uh, provide certain challenges for ambitious users. They should be multifunctional, open for changes, and accessible 24-7 if possible. So good, good movement spaces are therefore appealing, innovative, surprising, and stimulating. And, and last but not least, again, the climate change. Of course, water is used more and more, for example, for play, um, play activities, but also for refreshments. And then, at the end of the day, there will be the community of happy people. Yeah, thank you. So far, Mr. Meinert already addressed it on the Congress program of the IAKAs. Um, you, you mentioned uh, artificial turfs or synthetic turfs. Of course, we will address many different topics also under the heading uh, sustainability. So we need to talk about products, uh, processes um, on how products are produced and uh, turfs, for example, and, and uh, 
Artificial turfs are very, very important. There are many uncertainties, there are many uh, concerns when it comes to microplastics. Is it safe? Is it not safe? And this is why it is important to get all players on board, to get them all informed about the status quo. And the first assessment will be provided by Stefan Diedrich, CEO of the ESCC, the Trade Association for the Synthetic Turf Industry in the EMEA. And he will provide us with an overview. Thank you for having me here today. ESTC has placed sustainability at the core of its strategy and is bringing together all levels of the supply chain uh, of the synthetic turf industry to become part of a circular economy and to progress in the area of environmental care. Taking care of the environment is no longer just an option. It is an obligation and a responsibility for all. It is, a, it is clear that synthetic turf um, has tremendous social economic benefits. It allows for, for society to play sports and other activities all year around uh, under all weather, weather circumstances and in places where, uh, where there um, is a high population and a lack of space. But at the same time, we have to think about any potential side effects on the environment and do our utmost to neutralize these. ESTC is strongly pushing for proper separation and recycling of synthetic turf at the end of its life cycle. Um, and, and it should be taking place either on site or in dedicated facilities. It doesn't really matter, but it's very important that it's being taken care of. And of life turf becomes a valuable resource and will therefore form a raw material for future production processes. Another point is that ESTC is recommending field owners to ensure that any microplastic that might be caused during the, the use of synthetic turf is being captured and properly disposed of before it can end up in the environment. ESTC members are committed to use safe materials and strictly adhere to the REACH regulations. And ESTC and its members are doing the utmost to minimize CO2 emissions. And that's a special project and really a game changer in our industry is the PEFCR project, which is being done under the guidance of the European Commission. It is an LCA for the entire industry which will enable uh, us to compare different synthetic turf systems to each other and its environmental impact. Um, it, will end, it will result in a classification that is comparable to what we already know for the um, household appliances. If you buy a refrigerator, it has a classification from A to F, you will see a similar thing happening for the synthetic turf. And the end user will be able to, to specify which category they would like to see. And if you do not fulfill that requirement, you cannot even participate in the tendering process. Uh, after all, the industry is, is uh, going through an impressive transition period with a significant increase in innovation that will result in new products being brought to the marketplace in the coming years. And at FSB, a number of those products uh, and innovations will be shown by the industry participants. ESTC will have a stand as well, uh, and it will be great to see all friends uh, coming back again uh, at the ESTC uh, stand at FSB, uh, where we can, can mingle and talk about new innovations and together work on the future. Ja, und wir freuen uns, Sie zu sehen. Well, uh, we're happy to see statement. you for this uh, statement, uh, um, Mr. Diederich. Herr Meindl, wie sieht das aus? Mr. Meindl, ganz, ganz gehört, we heard a lot so ist, about the current state of affairs. ESTC. Gibt es aus Ihrer Sicht also, from the point of view of the ESTCs, are there items, items around the topic of uh, synthetic turf which is neglected? Well, I think um, uh, even though um, even though climate protection is important, environmental compatibility uh, is important, we should really lead a discussion which matter to fact. Of course, the products need to be uh, need to be environmental uh, environmental clean, but we should also uh, also talk about the benefits uh, for the use in the city. Um, the the open spaces are getting denser and denser and. Uh, the synthetic turf fields are really robust, can be used around the clock, also in all climate zone. So they are a great system, a system to um, uh, to fulfill the 
open space requirements at the same time they don't require a lot of space and there are no alternative outdoor uh, coverings which which would provide for outdoor use in such a way a big a big topic what what about the FSB um, does it address this topic yes in hall 10 2 one of the three halls that we cover um, you will find who is who of the synthetic turf and sports surface industry again um, we're talking about innovation innovation of the product or of the production process um, because this is also something that uh, end users uh, end users want to know when buying a product and um, and one in a piece of information for the press uh, people and the interested people I'm I'm not a friend of uh, of uh, providing names, but but um, but on the website of the FSB you may find all the exhibitors, and this is updated on an everyday basis. That is, if if you are interested, then take a look at the FSB uh, website. Um, yes, uh, yes, uh, you. Uh, so so much for in-house commercials. So let let us stick with. Um, um, with co uh, floor coverings, uh, floor coverings in general, and I've um, I've met and to talk to Teresa Rüdiger from the TFI in Aachen. That is the um, that is the co uh, floor covering research um, research institute, and what she has to say on such coverings, we will hear now. Well, thank you, Mrs. Rüdiger, for being with us today and for answering a couple of questions. So, before discussing about sustainability, first of all, I would like to ask you what the TFI does. It was founded in '64 as German uh, Flooring Research Institute, but meanwhile, I think it is a bit much more. Yes, thank you for having me. Uh, the TFI has existed for more than 60 years, and we are divided between a, a registered association and a limited company, and we have four pillars, research, testing, certification, and qualification. We are dealing with topics all around the space. This means the floor, the wall, and the ceiling in the interior space, but also a lot of questions related to the exterior. We are able to test building products uh, with respect to their building physics, for example, fire behavior, but we can also carry out chemical analysis and carry out tests for functionality and quality. Well, and in fact, let us go into much more detail. You are dealing with sustainability criteria for floor coverings. Uh, what does that mean exactly? Yes, we are not only dealing with uh, floor coverings, we are focusing on end-to-end -end systems, but let us take the flooring systems as an example. Uh, we started working on sustainability at the TFI 30 years ago. We dealt with recycling and uh, during the last years we developed accordingly over the years further criteria of ecological and social sustainability. This means that we prepare life cycle assessments, life cost analysis and help with sustainability reporting. Well, I think after quite a long pilot uh, phase, you launched a project in in August uh, last year in the market, that is the Sustainability Product Passport. Uh, what does that mean exactly? Well, this was a very exciting project in cooperation with three other companies in our network. We published uh, the Product Passport in August and we are very happy about that. It has been welcomed very positively uh, by builders, architects, planners, and their customers, and of course we would like to expand it much uh, more. And this is why we are dealing with a sports area where we have a high potential for development, but there we are still in the pilot phase. There is a high potential to, to tap, and that means we have to define criteria. And this is what is the, the, the essence of this product, Passport Sustainability. It is a communication tool between architects, planners, builders, 
who are asked to uh, certify, in fact, uh, everything related to these criteria. The product passport is a translator that translates the product-related information into the criteria of building certification, such as GNB, BREAM or LED. TFI is exhibiting uh, at the FSB, and um, when I go to your stand as a visitor, as an expert, uh, what can I expect? Well, everything. We will ask or, uh, answer all the questions with regard to the four pillars in all areas, but of course, um, we will of course be available for questions related to a life cycle assessment and so on and so forth. But uh, with regard to sports, it is still in its infancy, your project, but are there any types of cooperation you are planning. Well, I am firmly convinced about that. We are, in fact, uh, discussing a about a lot of uh, uh, issues during the FSB, and there will be a lot of room for cooperation. Thank you very much uh, for having been with us, and uh, have a lot of success. Thank you for having me. That was very exciting with regard to this topic, too. Um, Mr. Pullman, she really didn't, didn't, didn't go into detail. She said that you can expect everything during the trade fair. Could you be a little bit more concrete? We are very happy for this partnership that we are having with TFI. And, uh, well, I think this cooperation will become uh, visible very soon. First of all, the manufacturers uh, registered for SFB, FSB will uh, get a question questionnaire uh, where they can ask their questions and um, then uh, the uh, visitors will have a valid tool, a database in order to have an important look um, at all the products uh, which are available and the criteria which will be important for the tenders to come. What is also important for us is to intensify cooperation in the future future. It has become very clear that people who are dealing with products uh, have to know exactly what the material is that is used with regard to CO2 emissions and so on and so forth. And on the basis of data we have, we want to be able to provide this information. During the IAKS uh, um, Congress, we will discuss about all these topics and the product passport will be um, presented once again. Thank you very much for this exciting exchange with regard to future cooperation. Um, Mr. Meinl mentioned already that this topic is very important for uh, the FSB. Well, Mr. Kanevisha said that uh, in its, his introduction. We all are very much aware about the targets that we have, but how uh, can we reach our targets. We need all types of infrastructure and for this infrastructure we need certification, we need criteria for assessment in order to understand uh, the criteria for, for sustainability much better. This is about climate protection targets, it is about uh, what the municipalities can do and this uh, sustainability product uh, passport can be very valuable in this respect. Respect. Architects, builders, planners are asking for this instrument and I think this is going to be a good service uh, to be provided to all interested parties. You said already that we are all very much aware of the targets we have. We discussed about the visions we have and sustainability has to be the focus. But what in fact is the current situation of our sports infrastructures and in order to discuss that, we have uh, asked a representative of the German Olympic Sports Confederation. 
Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you very much for having me here at the press conference of the FSB um, Trade Fair. My name is Christian Siegel. I'm in charge of sport facilities, environments, and sustainability on behalf of the German Olympic Sports Confederation. The DOSB is the umbrella organization of sports. We are representing all sports associations in Germany uh, with 27 million members, 87,000 sport associations, and we we are really the most important people's movement in Germany. I'm happy about the focus of the FSB, that is sustainability, which has become the guiding line on a global level since uh, the 80s. And this is also true for sports. Um, the OSB is subscribing to a sustainable, environmentally friendly and continuous development of sustainability in sport. And this is why all our business units are really related in many ways to the three dimensions of sustainability, the ecological aspect, environmental protection, nature protection, the social aspect, values, health, education, inclusion, equality, diversity and commitment, and in the economic field, profitability, good governance and uh, human resources. Many sport organizations have been committed during the last years in the field of sustainability. Strategies have been published, Competitions have been organized, events are being organized, and programs for sport associations have been developed. But what happened to our sport associations in recent years? Well, recent years have been very challenging for sport clubs. Due to the uh, COVID pandemic, a, a lot of associations had to shut down, facilities were closed, no training took place, and when we got back to normal, there was the next crisis to come, the scarcening of fossil fuels due to the war between Russia and the Ukraine. And this was a major challenge for many sports associations. These mostly non-profit associations have taken energy saving measures, have shown how creative and efficient they can be. But there are also financial requirements. The warm winter, however, and the energy price break helped a lot. We also had an hardship clause um, adopted by the federal government, but we are still on our alert. Uh, energy prices have gone down uh, substantially, but they are still higher than before the war, and this will be a future burden for our sport associations, and this is why we will have to deal with energy supply and with the climate change, because Germany has always been known as the champion of the building of uh, sport facilities. We have 230,000 of them in Germany, and most of them were built during the 60s and 80s. Uh, however, in 2018, uh, the investment requirements for modernization amounted to 31 billion euros, and this does not include cost for decarbonization, which is important in order to become independent uh, from fossil fuels. And that requires a major investment campaign to keep up our quality with regard to sports. The coalition agreement reflects the importance of sports and the major challenges to come. A campaign in favor of investment in sport facilities carried out by municipalities by taking into account sustainability is to be enhanced. And moreover, the federal government is developing the development plan sports, which has to be seen as a cross-cutting function where all ministries have to be involved. The topics that I have mentioned are extremely important for our uh, society because sports has a major potential to tap so that we can come out of these crises uh, much stronger than before. And this is why it is important that during the FSB we discuss about climate change, energy supply and sustainability. And uh, during the FSB uh, trade fair on the 25th of October, together with the IAKS Deutsch, uh, the Deutsche Städtebund, the Federal Institute for Sports Science, and the German Association of uh, Municipalities and Cities, we will organize the second German Day of Facilities for Sports. We will discuss about sustainability uh, so that we can develop modern and uh, sustainable sports facilities. I would like to invite you 
to this event because we have to commit ourselves to new measures to take so that we can ensure uh, the uh, survival of sport facilities in our society. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for the statement. Uh, without sports facility, of course, nothing is possible, and we need to take care of uh, such facilities. And as Mr. Siegel said, uh, there, uh, there will be the second German Sports Facilities Day. Why is it so important? Uh, well, of course, um, um, Christian Siegel was really detailed, and, and, um, and um, his statement was very good. Uh, but we see the challenges are high, the, uh, the investment investment need is very high, and it's very good that the coalition agreement also covers this. And now, now the municipalities um, must have the chance to get some information, and this, and this is why the the German uh, German Sports uh, Facilities Day is so important. That is, all the representatives of the national municipalities, association, landscape architects, and what have you, can meet up, can talk, and can and can learn for for their own planning. That is, for for their own uh, muni municipality. But perhaps uh, we can broaden the view a little bit. Uh, of course, we are organizing the Planners Forum and also the sportnetzwerk.fsb that we um, that we conduct together with the Sportstätten Rechner, and addressing the very same topics, addressing the same target group. So it's a very comprehensive program for such group of visitors. So, so let us talk a little bit about the, um, the framework program. We have addressed the congresses and uh, the facility days, addressing a lot of sustainability aspects. But what else is going on? Well, very exciting, uh, exciting things are going on. Of course, uh, as usual at the FSB, of course, this is what the trade fair person always says. Yes, but this time it's correct. Um, and it's, it's just one reason to visit uh, the trade fair. Well, of course, transports, uh, for example, like parkour, um, our topics, and um, that is uh, girls and boys, uh, girls and, uh, run through the cities, uh, jump over walls, which we shouldn't imitate really. Um, uh, there, are, there are nice partners there. Then playground, um, playground and landscape is one of our partners um, um, with whom we organize a marketplace where one or the other equipment can be tested. And then another transport is Padel Tennis. In a smaller space, like tennis, a, mix, a mixture between tennis and squash. Um, and that is, you have an in, indoor uh, glass walled uh, playing field. Smaller, smaller tennis racks are used, um, and um, and we will have presentations with German players. Some of them national players. Uh, they meet Spanish players, and we also know it from the FSB um, that we have a, a FIBA uh, court. The, you can pl uh, play basketball. This is not the end. Uh, this is not the end. We're, we're still working on it. And just check the uh, social media and just bring your sports gear. Okay, so bring your sports gear and try and test uh, new sports, uh, trendy sport. And you said it's only four months to go. We heard about sports gear. And when, when I, as visitor or company, want to get some sort or of orientation um, on the FSB. We heard about the social media, LinkedIn, uh, but well, what are the other opportunities to get information? Well, first of all, look at the exhibitors list and get an overview of uh, the exhibitors and then specify your interest. Um, so they really, we have different theme worlds. Uh, then uh, then uh, the database, uh, uh, database should be checked, uh, the aqua Aquanal and the FSB, um, they, uh, they present certain themes. The uh, first point of uh, contact, uh, contact is for the visitors three months ahead of the fair, that is uh, mid of to end of July. We open the ticket shop. Then I can get a ticket, which I use, of course, to enter the trade fair, uh, but not only uh, to this purpose, but I can start matchmaking uh, for the trade fair 
der visits, um, that is, via the app, I can contact other people, uh, that is, uh, both on the exhibitor side and on the participant side, and they can be matched, and uh, so the fair starts up front. You can plan your fair visits, you can check what companies are represented, but you can also make meeting appointments. So, so for example, to to get the ticket, put it in a ticket wallet, uh, wallet, uh, download, uh, download the local um, local transport uh, ticket. Uh, these are things. Uh, these are things which you can organize up front, and then you bring your sports gear and uh, and try out all the trend sports. Uh, I, I don't know why you said that we shouldn't imitate uh, imitate parkour, <laughs> parkour runners. Well, this brings us more or less to the end of the press conference. But to you at home, should there be any questions, please send a question in the chat below the live stream. If something is unclear, we we'll love to take your questions. Perhaps at the end, a question to you both, Mr. Meinl. You personally, IAKS Congress, many many um, events. But what what do you expect from the FSB 23? Well, I think as a society, but also as industry, we need to take important leaps in the development uh, in order in order to provide a good environment worth living in, also for the next uh, generation and healthy and um, in for an healthy and active lifestyle, sports and leisure infrastructures will have an important function in this respect. And it's up to us as industry to make that potential that lies within the more visible IAKS Congress and FSP are f fantastic programs, of course. It's a community of happy people who are meeting and I, I'm, I think we are presenting a fair which completely reflects the industry after a very, very difficult time. We are very pleased to welcome people back at the FSB and are very pleased that we could win over, uh, win over new exhibitors. And I'm also looking forward to, to the very, very last day when we will do parkour. Okay, I don't hope that, uh, that you only buy tickets it's for the we very final Frage, date. Well, we do have a question uh, Pohlmann, to Mr. Pollmann. Uh, what are the synergies yeah, with the Aquanel? Well, I said it uh, at the beginning. Uh, of, co of course, uh, there's a good purpose for having two yeah, events in parallel. If, if, you, if you look at the visitor side, it becomes clear. If it comes to sports facilities, construction, or, uh, or infrastructure, or, for example, uh, neighborhoods, we have facilities and uh, and playgrounds and, and this can be easily expanded to public pools um, swimming pools private pools uh, whirlpools so that the visitors looking at infrastructure post uh, sports facilities uh, construction can see both and uh, does not have to visit a second uh, trade for uh, this is a uh, greatest synergy so so the biggest plus is for the visitor one question to me Mr. Minor, what, what do you expect from uh, from the Impulse Australia? Well, Australia, as already mentioned, Olympic and Paralympic Games in 2032. Uh, Australia are, are really a very, very uh, sporty uh, society. And currently, the thing is um, that the sports facilities industry is developing very positive. There is a lot of public investment into modernization and new builds, and not not under under the aspect of um, of supporting top athletes but uh, for the public and uh, in the background we found a partner and this is the NSC the uh, national uh, national sports and Physi uh, physical activity convention and in 2024 we would like to um, to partner with them during their Congress and and um, uh, and we, we would like to go there with our partners from the FSB and the FSB in order to pave the way for a further cooperation Operation. Thank you. Uh, um, so far to the questions, uh, we leave the we leave 
um, the question window open. You can always ask your question, uh, questions afterwards. Uh, and you can, you can watch uh, the press conference again uh, on your, our YouTube channel. And I'm very pleased to have you, uh, to have you here and, have, and that we could have you here. And I, I thank you, Mr. Meiner and Mr. Polman. Thank you, the virtual participants and visitors of the uh, press conference. And I uh, thank the organi organizers for uh, being host here. And I wish you a successful parallel trade fair with FSB and Aquanal. I wish you a lot of good new contacts. Um, and of course, a nice, nice parkour, um, a parkour run on the very, very final day. Yes, he, uh, Mr. My, Mr. Minor is joining on the Friday. We're looking forward to that. Thank you for watching and see you in October at the FSB. All the best.